Let's take a closer peek. Blah, blah, blah. Hold on. I wouldn't say let's break it down. I'm trying to think of what I would actually say. Oh. Hey everyone. We did downward facing dog hip opener, pigeon, and a forward squat hip opener. And let's talk about more closely what goes into these stretches so you can get the most out of it. Downward facing dog hip opener. Come into a downward facing dog. Pressing your palms strongly into the mat and your heels are working down towards the mat behind you. Don't worry if your heels are up. You're still gonna get the same benefit. You're lifting up one of your legs up towards the ceiling or the sky if you're outside and you're going to try to keep your shoulders level and just open up externally rotating the leg. You're going to want to turn a little bit but do your best to keep those shoulders level and the hips are the only things opening up. Then you can rotate your leg back in and step it to the other foot. Now let's talk about pigeon. You can come into this pose from downward facing dog, lifting your leg and sweeping it forward in the middle of your chest. Then you're going to bring down the knee and sit back into your hips. If you're a little bit more flexible, you can move the front heel away from your hips. If you're less flexible, you're bringing your heel closer towards your hips. If you have more flexibility or range of motion in your hips, you're going to move your heel away from your hips and this is your pose. If you're not as flexible, you're bringing your heel closer towards your groin and finding a place that you have your first edge at. Once you've adjusted your front leg, you're going to come into a fold. You're folding over that front leg, reaching with your fingertips out and relaxing the neck. So forehead works its way down towards the floor. You're going to feel some sensation in your hip and you're just going to want to breathe into it and relax as much as possible and know that you are benefiting from the stretch. When you're ready to come up, you're going to press on your fingertips, lifting your torso up and walking back towards your hips. Then you can switch your leg. Same thing here. I'm a little less flexible on this side, so my heel is closer in towards my groin. And you're trying to bring that hip down towards the ground and moving forward to fully benefit from the stretch, relaxing into it. Once you're ready, you're going to press your fingertips into the ground and walk yourself back upright. Our next hip opener, you're going to spread your feet wider than your hip distance and bend your knees. Don't go too low at first. You can always adjust as you go. But you are going to take your hands and put them around your ankles or your shins and then press your elbows into your knees. From here, so you don't fall backwards, you're countering by lengthening the spine, pulling your head towards or away from your hips and using that traction to really pull your knees back. You can go lower if you'd like or stay up high. Then come out of it with five pointed star just to give your hips a little break, release. If you practice these poses, I'm sure that you're going to gain and increase the flexibility in your hips, maybe in other places as well. So just stick with it. It can be a little bit of a harder stretch. A lot of us hold a lot of tension in our hips. So just stick with it and you'll see the results. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Katie, for coming out and sharing some of your yoga practice with us. As always, you make it look so easy. Uh, don't worry guys, if you can't do half the stuff that she did, just slowly ease your way into it. Um, I'll show you some variations uh, at later videos, but give uh, what Katie is doing a try. 
And again, listen to your body. Uh, do what feels comfortable for you. Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. Till next time. Happy stretching.